Hi, this is Nolan from Benchmark, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to move your Carlson project into microsurveys field genius while keeping your localization intact. So you're going to need three things in order to carry out this process. You're going to need a .ref reference file from Carlson. You're going to need a list of all the points from Carlson in an exported format, something like a CSV file. And then you're going to need a localization file from Carlson, a .loc file. Once you have those three things, you can move your project into Field Genius. So the first thing you're going to want to do to begin here is you're going to want to make sure that all of your points from your Carlson job have been exported and then imported into Field Genius. So before this video began, I ran around the neighborhood here and I just tagged four points for the point of this video. And then I exported them from Carlson and I've now imported them into Field Genius. And if you want to know exactly how to do that, I'll just link to a video in the top right corner. But as you can see here, I have four points that aren't exactly coordinates, but they are my own coordinate system on my own grid. So I'm just going to close out of my point database here. And now that I have all of my points inside Field Genius, the next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to connect to my base. So I'm just, in this case, going to reconnect to my base. If you don't already have a Bluetooth pairing, to your base. Uh, I'll link to a video in the top right corner showing you how to set up a Basin Rover with your S631 um, or really any Basin Rover combination. But once I've paired and I've set up my base here, I'm going to need to start my reference. <clears throat> so you can see here right above my start reference button, it says known position there. So what I'm going to do now within my reference position window here is enter my latitude, longitude, and height from the previous Carlson job so that my base is set up on the same point. I'm just going to enter my latitude as 51.084741757. And then I'm just going to throw a D at the end of the latitude here. And what that's going to do is it's automatically going to convert my latitude into DMS, which is what the settings of this job are. And then if I go to my next tab here into longitude, you can see that it automatically does this conversion for me and I don't need to do anything else. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to drag over my notepad. Uh, which had my REF file open in it. And you can just see here that I have my 51.084741757 latitude number stored in here. And then you can also see that I have a longitude number and my ellipsoidal height. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to enter those numbers into their corresponding fields here now in Field Genius. So as you just saw in that file, I'm going to enter my longitude of of minus 141.1746111539. And then again, I'm just going to throw a D to convert it to DMS here. And then if I enter that and head to my ellipsoidal height here, I'm just going to enter the proper number there as well, 1055.75116323436. So once all of those values are entered properly for my Carlson REF file, I'm going to hit set position there in the bottom left. And then I'm going to save this point to my points database in order to make sure I can come back to this next time. And instead of typing in all this information, I can just choose it from my point database. But I'm just going to call this base so it's easy to remember. Store my point and then my antenna height here for my S631, I measured before the video began at 1.5 meters. If you want to know how to measure the HI on your S631, I'll include again a link to a video in the top right corner there. But since this is all correct here, I'm going to hit OK to set my antenna height, and it's going to bring up my link configure screen here. I've already set up all my radio settings properly before the video began. If you want to know how to set up your Basin Rover for your S631, I'll link to a video in the top right corner again. But since I've already set it all up correctly here, I'm just going to hit connect, and it's going to, it's going to initialize the radio modem on my base. Okay, so now that my base is done being set up here, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to connect to my rover. So I'm going to head to the bottom left corner here and hit the plumb bob icon. And in the resulting menu here, I'm going to hit disconnect. And then it's going to give me a second and then it'll load back up. And instead of disconnect there, you can see now that it says connect. So if I hit connect here, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to select my GNSS rover from my instrument type here and then just initialize the Bluetooth pairing. So I've already done this before. If you want to know how to set up your own Bluetooth pairing for your own device, I'll link to a video in the top right corner showing you how to do that for any device in Field Genius. But once I've got my Bluetooth pairing set up here and I'm connected, 
I'm gonna end up back at my link configure screen here, except instead of the base, I'm gonna be here for the rover. And again, I've already set up my base and rover before this video started once, so I don't need to do it again. So I'm just gonna hit connect here and initialize the radio modem on my rover. Okay, so now that I've set up my rover, I'm now back at the map screen here, and the more astute of you might notice that it says autonomous in the bottom right corner here instead of fixed. That is because the re-radiating kit inside of our office that I normally use to film these videos has unfortunately died on me. So this is a bit of a different setup I have for today, and I can't quite get a good enough position with my receiver to get a fixed solution as I've got it. Uh, in between three different eaves inside of a corner of a building, so there's not much hope of getting much of anything in here for GPS. But that is okay. I don't need to be fixed in order to load my localization in. So what I'm going to want to do now is I'm going to want to head to the bottom left corner here and click the plumb bob icon, and in the resulting main menu here, I'm going to hit survey tools, and then GNSS local transformation, and then from my three options here, I'm going to select the middle one, import parameters, and then it's going to ask me if I want to overwrite all existing local transformation parameters. I'm going to hit yes. And then I'm going to navigate to where I saved that .loc file I got you to grab at the beginning of this video. Okay, so now that I've got to my .loc file, I'm going to click it and then select open there in the bottom right corner. And that's going to bring me back to my GNSS local transformation. You can now see there are a bunch of different options that you can now click. Do not click any of these. This will... Um, you will have to restart if you do this. So please, please, please do not click any of those. You're just going to lead to more problems for yourself. So what you're actually going to do is you're going to hit go back there at the bottom and just back out of this menu back to your map view. So now that I'm back at the map screen and I've set up my base properly, I've imported all my points from Carlson and I've moved my localization file into Field Genius here. I'm actually ready to start serving. However, that being said, before you start serving, I would highly recommend staking out a couple of the points in the middle of your job just to ensure that you've correctly moved over all these files into Field Genius and that nothing's gone awry during the process. That way there, you can have the peace of mind that everything's been done correctly and you're not gonna run into any problems down the road. And that's everything for today's video. If you have any questions about anything you've seen in today's video or you have any questions about anything you've seen on our YouTube channel, please give us a call at one 888 286-3204 or visit us on the web at bench-mark.ca.